Hi, I'm Mark Ostro, plastic surgeon. I'm really excited and honored today to have a conversation with Maria, who is the founder of Mummy MOT, to discuss about uh, rectus diastasis. As a plastic surgeon, we do see a lot of abdominal plastic patients who has rectus diastasis, and I would very much like Maria's opinion on the pre-op uh, treatment from the physiotherapy point of view and the post-op and how we can help with patients. Hi Maria. Hi Em. Um, yeah. Yes, we're, I'm Maria Elliott. I'm a pelvic health physio and founder of Mummy MOT. And you know, part of the Mummy MOT is checking the tummy mm -hmm. gap and checking the abdomen. And we look at everything else. We look at posture, how mums are moving, but it's really the tummy and the pelvic floor that everybody wants checked. So that um, abdomen and tummy area uh, on a Tuesday here, we're blessed now, we've got a busy clinic with mums coming in and out. Um, so we check that and ideally mums don't need an abdominal yeah. plasty, um, but there are a certain number of mums that do. And generally they're the mums, aren't they, that have done the rehab, their 12, 18 mm. months post-surgery or post-delivery and um, they stop breastfeeding and often we would send them to you then for a consult. And what we often look at as well um, before surgery is we often have to change sometimes the way mums uh, move or breathe so that once you've done your wonderful surgery mm -hmm. then we get an optimal result afterwards. So ideally we would see mums four to six times mm -hmm. before they'd ever have surgery and then they have a plan and a roadmap for what they need to do from a physiotherapy point of view mm. once you've done surgery. And then, you know, every tummy gap is different and then sometimes the, the rehab uh, following surgery varies as well depending on the mum. Mm. I mean, I'm very lucky to have you here because the patient group that come and see you and come and see me uh, is expecting slightly different thing. In, my case, they sort of come in asking for abdominal plasty, but on examination, I noticed the rectus divarication. While you're always about already improving the rectus divarications, yeah. I feel that a lot of my patients would benefit from seeing you before surgery. How do you feel about that part? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think, you know, the statistics would say that one in three mums will have more than a two finger, three finger gap at 12 weeks. And often that doesn't change unless we change something. Mm -hmm. So we have to think, why does that mum still have that separation? And is it her posture? Is it her breathing? Is it her connective tissue? So there's a lot that we can do. And it's also, isn't it, about checking because of that diverticulation and the rectus diastasis, what functional problems are they getting? Mm. Are they having back pain? Are they having tummy pain? Are they constipated? Because there's the loss of that support fascially and with the muscles to their internal organs. So there's so much that we look at. It's not just measuring the tummy gap. Mm. Um, we're looking at, as I said, function. And mums need to be really strong, don't they, in their centre? Because now they've got, you know, these children and kids that want to play football and that want to go and give mm. them these, you know, big bear hugs, and if they feel vulnerable um, in their centre there, abdominally, um, they're not going to move correctly, they're not going to breathe correctly. And that's where, you know, you know, yes, doing an abdominal plasty and surgery um, is, is kind of not the last option, but we do yeah. try everything else beforehand. But then once that decision is made to proceed with the surgery, I think it's really, really important, isn't it? That we're all talking and we've got a plan in place mm. and um, then you get the best results post-surgery mm. and then sometimes we find isn't it and you would know this and um, everybody heals differently don't yeah, they? So sometimes right. we've got to do a bit more work on the, the scar yeah. um, and we might have to do some manual therapy we might have to use LPG and then with some mums we don't at all all of that heals really well and they don't have any it doesn't restrict their movements and function. Um, and I think the other um, question we often get when mums come from a mummy MOT and from actually the mummy MOT practitioners is about the hernias, mm. uh, you know, and is there a hernia there? What do we do? Um, what surgery, what symptoms should we look out for 
from a practitioner point of view. So what do you think we should, what symptoms or function do we need to check for the hernias? Mm. I think that's a very interesting question on the basis that some people call the rectus diverications a ventral hernia, but ultimately it's a separation of your rectus muscles mm -hmm. with the linear elbow in position, but just widen. Some ladies, because of the abdominal pressure during pregnancy, they develop a hernia around or near the belly button, which is the, either the umbilical hernia or the periumbilical hernia. Mm -hmm. They're usually small, they usually in general don't cause any problem. And in Africa Ribbon Group, a lot of them actually has a umbilical hernia before they have any form of uh, rectus divergation. So that can be treated at the same time. I think surgery is about repairing the uh, rectus divergation, possibly if there's a hernia, we can do it at the same time, along with removing the excess uh, penis in the lower part of your abdomen. So giving them the uh, good uh, physical appearance. And also they do change their posture after we've done all that. Yes, yeah. yeah. And often you do have to remove, don't you? Especially if the skin has lost its yeah. um, integrity and there's lots of um, stretch marks, isn't it? You have to do take away some of the skin and then everything is much uh, tighter afterwards. But well, then sometimes that, doesn't it? It restricts how the mums can breathe and yeah. how they can move. So that's where we sometimes have to get back to, to basics. Like, you know. Can I ask you an interesting question? Because we have now tightened the abdomen by repairing the rectus diverications, some of our patients afterwards, sometimes they feel a bit bloated after dinner yeah. and it's simply because everything is tighter. Also, the second part is that we know pregnancy can have some effect on the pelvic floor. Yeah. So by tightening that, what would you advise our patients to do after surgery to help with the pelvic floor pressures and the bloatedness? Yeah, um, yeah that's a really good question, isn't it? And um, you know, often isn't it surgically everything looks great, mm. but, but then you end up with some new functional problems. So, um, again, as we you know improve the tension here, then the pressure can go somewhere else. So you can get hemorrhoids, you can get symptoms of prolapse. So as you say, that's where we have to also keep an eye as pelvic health physios and check what's happening with the pelvic floor and make sure that post surgery that they really start with the pelvic mm. floor so they get that pelvic floor lifting they get that connection with our our deep tba and often um again everybody's different we might have to do some manual therapy we saw that patient where mm. you know that transverse colon just seemed to be way up here post surgery so once we did some manual therapy mm. and released the um scar uh, following surgery she was able to uh, breathe much better so yeah, often that combination of manual therapy and also keeping an eye on what's mm. happening with the pelvic floor. Sometimes we use our pelvic power chair, which you know I love, to kind of keep the pelvic floor nice and strong. And I think actually we don't do that routinely, but that's probably a good mm. idea at 12 weeks post-abdominal plasty for everybody to have the mm. pelvic floor checked. That would be yeah. an excellent idea. You always have great ideas, don't you? Yeah. No, no, I think this... I'm, well, at least in my, from my point of view, is that I'm very fortunate to have you here at 4 Upper Wimble Street to be working together, bounce off ideas, and for a while we have been thinking about setting up some form of proper protocol so yeah. patients have the maximum amount of benefit because some patients have abdominal plasty elsewhere and they don't get the physio with it. And sometimes, as you say, they come and see you and we're lucky that I can just drop by your part of the office and have a look at the tummy and see what could benefit the patients. I think yeah. we're just having a, a very fortunate position here. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, as more and more mums are coming now for a mummy MOT, so the team of physios is growing as well. And we've mm. got some great, like, new MSK physios. So they're really good at looking at how the mums move. And then we've got some great pelvic health physios. So I think it's all that combination of us all working together. Uh, for the mums. So, yeah, thank you for helping us on the Tuesday. No, thank you.